All right, so, so um, Alex apparently really wants me to upload a guitar video. I'm not sure if you can see that. It says he apparently wants me to make a guitar video, so I'm going to make a guitar video. Not guitar hero, just guitar. This guy right here in particular. Uh, not sure how well you can see that. It's my red and white vintage Squire Stratocaster. Right there, yeah. It looks mirrored as I'm looking at it right now, but I'm guessing it's not going to be in the actual finished product. It probably just looks mirrored to uh, make sure that my face looks like I see it in the mirror. So it looks normal to me. Like to me, my hair is pointing to my right right now as I'm looking at it from the screen, but it should point to your left, which is actually your right. You know, the direction I'm pointing right now should be right. I don't know. It's really weird. Anyway. Alex asked me to make a video of me playing the guitar, which I think it's just him being cute, but you know, I'm gonna try to do that. Um, this is my guitar, and it's actually kind of unfortunate because I uh, I don't really know how to play this thing, right? So I've got a list of chords right here. Right. given to me by my guitar teacher. This is actually something I made right now. This, that's, I think, the violin key. These are the four chords that I play. It's in four, four. Each of these is a quarter note. So I do, if I'm playing at 100 BPM, which I'm gonna simulate right now through this metronome. I had it at 130 because I was trying to play Crazy Train, right? So if I have a quarter note going at that speed, it means I do right one per one of these beats. Now, of course, this is set to beat zero, which means that each beat is like a full bar, really. But if I set it to four, which is what it's supposed to be for uh, four four, obviously, then if I have this running. Like that. You get the idea. Anyway. So, these are all the chords that I know right here. And you've got this thing, which, if I'm not mistaken, in the English music theory is a C chord. And it goes a bit like this. There you go. And yeah, now I've got a nice distorted sound right now because, like I said, I was trying to play Crazy Train. Let me get that fixed. Uh, which do you think? Actually, I'm going to show you. I've got this shit right here. It's a bit broken. I have to replace it. Um, but right now, it still kind of works. Um, it's set to drive right now, which is for the overdrive, so I can turn up the gain and I get the nice kind of metal sound. And I'm gonna set it to blues three to have a slightly distorted sound. Get a slightly distorted sound like what well, you might hear in something like say the All Man Brothers band or something like that. I don't remember if that's exactly the name of it. Although they probably sound a heck of a lot nicer than this. All right. Oh, and that's really quiet. My bad. Uh, so let me turn up the game, turn up the master. There we go. Right, and now after this I can do a D chord, uh, which is easier than a C chord because it's only four strings. This right here. Right, and now I can do this, which I don't actually know what it is in English. I'm going to have to think. Uh, okay, so it's an A minor chord. And A minor is like this. See now the interesting thing about a minor chord, at least from what I can tell, is that it seems the same as the major chord, but the highest string is lowered one fret. 
So if I go like this instead, this is now an A chord. Right? It's just kind of an interesting little thing that I noticed. Then I've got this. It's an E minor. And once again, as you can see, I'm playing an open note on this string, G string. If I add a finger to that, it becomes an E non minor. Right? And then I can do the D minor, which sounds wrong to me, but it's what my guitar teacher said this chord is like. So, see, but it sounds really creepy. Sounds like something you'd hear in a maybe Pink Floyd song. And then I can do the G chord, which is a real bitch, because you have to do this. See that? I've got this middle finger right here on 2nd fret, 5th string, and then ring finger is on the 3rd fret, 6th string, and then I've got pinky on the 3rd fret of the 5th of the 1st, not 5th. It's a very nice kind of full sounding chord because you played all six strings. I could also do this, an F bar, but I forgot how it's done, so I'm not going to try it. And I can kind of put these together in a bit of a transition, right? So you, you've got that going. So if you want to change that from a C to a, what is it? C to a A minor. Yeah. All you do is do that and then right you move your ring finger down two and then stick it under there like that. Then get rid of your index, move that up one one string. There you go. Slide up a little bit so it's right next to the other fret and then you can do that chord as well. Pretty cool. I also came up with my own chord transition, which I've got in this book, that one, but it's way harder than the one that my teacher told me to play, which is this one. And it's way harder because I don't know how to come up with a chord transition, so I just picked the ones that I thought sounded nice. And they are... I'm going to play these in order, actually. All right. So I've got this, which I think... Is that it? Yeah, I always get confused because this A minor is exactly the same as this E, just one string lower. So it's a bit confusing. All right. So I've got this guy. All right, and then I have to change it to that. And then I have to do this. And then I finish it off with that. See, my thinking behind that is since I've got this, um, what is it? I've got this E chord, right? And I'm playing like that. If I want to move up to a D, all I have to do is get rid of these, slide up one fret, and I'm already in the correct position for the D string, then all I have to do is reposition the other two fingers. But I've already, I've got this thing as a, my anchor, right? So that's, that was my logic behind that. And then after that, what can I do? I can do a chromatic scale, which I'm actually going to have to do a, a bit of a step back for this. Uh, but this is a really weird scale. It's, it doesn't sound very good at all because it's just every every note. So it's something like this. It starts like... Fuck. Yeah, I make a lot of mistakes playing uh, scales and things like that. And I also don't think you can really see it very well. If I stand up, I'm too far away. If I sit down, I'm too, too low. So I'm gonna go like this. There we go. Doing this for you, Alex. So. It's something like that anyway. You start basically on the uh, seventh fret and you finish it off right here on the seventh fret, but on the lowest string, which is actually the highest. 
Um, it's the lowest in terms of height compared to the floor, but it's the highest in terms of pitch, right? So you've got every note from here to here, which I'm sure is several octaves. Uh, I don't know for sure. I can probably guess though, because if it's 12 notes in an octave and you've got four here, and four here, and four here, so right okay so this is one octave different yeah that's the difference of an octave right there and if I go up here by how many yeah so it's a bit, it's a bit different on the um, second string because most for most strings the way it works if you have you play the fifth fret here then the open string for the lower note is the same note All right so I've got that fifth fret and it's the same it's the same note that sounds a little bit uh, warmer when you play it on the fifth fret it sounds a little bit more of a bright sound on an open string but yeah apparently if you go up two strings and then move back two frets it's that's the difference of an octave which makes sense because uh, like my shrone is played like that i think but you have to do the second fret and then move slide off just adds a little bit of variety to it uh, but apparently uh, if you want to go from here right I apologize about that I'm not sure if you can hear it when I tap a note it's a really ugly kind of sound because all the other notes get played very very lightly but because of the fact that unlike uh, with the other strings where the 5th fret is equal to the open note for the G string oh, if you play the 5th fret there's a difference for the open note because the open note on the B string is equal to the 4th fret right? at least it would be if it was correctly tuned but I think, I think my guitar goes out of tune pretty easily because it's really old strings and I'm gonna take it to a guitar shop get it all fixed up um, anyway because of the fact that this is one fret lower I'm wondering if, if I want to go from here if I go two strings higher is that the same is that an octave higher or I have to go one fret higher I think I do okay so that's the difference right so take note if you want if you're on the G string it's gonna go exactly one octave higher just move up two strings and then three frets cool you learn something new every day I guess and uh, what else can I do on the guitar this is the last thing I can do and it's the C major scale right and the C major scale is these notes right you've got that one 3rd fret, 5th, and you've got open, 2nd, 3rd, open, 2nd, open, 1st, okay, got that. And that pretty much makes up everything I know how to do on a guitar. Not much. No, actually, there are some things I can do besides that. I can play Blue Orchid, check it out. I'm gonna fuck this up really badly. Yeah, I knew that. It's always a change from this string, the, the fifth to the fourth, that makes it really difficult. I'll take that. And then I can play Iron Man, which to do that I have to make it more metal. There we go. 
Not good enough. It's always really difficult to do this because you have to do a power chord and then slide it down. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then you have to keep picking it. But that's Iron Man. And then what else? I can. I know the notes to. I know the notes to Crazy Train, but I can't play them very well. It's this. More or less. Uh, what else? I sh I could play my show as you saw uh, earlier. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. But it sounds really stupid with this kind of overdriven sound, so I'm gonna set it back to more bluesy sound. It also sounds stupid because it's one octave higher than in the actual song because. Um, Roger Waters plays it on the bass, and this is a guitar, so... I need to make it a bit louder. We like loud. Although it's it's not metal, so we just like loud. Yeah. Fuck. I don't want to fuck it up on camera, because it makes it seem like I'm bad at playing the guitar, and I'm not. I'm actually really good. And that's uh, the riff to Money by Pink Floyd. Pretty cool. In 7-4. Uh, what else can I do? Is there anything else that I can do? Of course there is. Come on. Yeah. Fuck. Don't think I need to say what that is. And then I can also do... Uh... No, fuck. And that's uh, in a God of the Vida, kind of. This is, should actually be more distorted than this, so I'm gonna let it to drive. Okay. Fuck. Fuck. Okay. More or less, I mean, I was, I'm not very good at playing it, so I don't expect to do it without any mistakes. Uh, what else? Well, I I'm, I'm think I know how to do a symphony destruction, which goes like this. It's like you do that, kind of a muted sound, right? It sounds really stupid because I'm not playing distorted right now. But I need to do that again. But I, I can't play correctly. And then if I turn the distortion back up for this next one, it's. Uh, fuck, I, I'm okay, I'm retarded. It's Enter Sandman. I, I don't know how I managed to forget that, that one. Okay. And you slide up to the seventh fret, and then you do this. Fuck. But it's all down strokes. I did uh, alternate picking right there. Okay, I'm not at the level where I can even guess how that's supposed to be played. Like what, what kind of fingers you're supposed to be using, let alone actually manage to do it. Um. It's just a bunch of things that I picked up, really, just for fun. I think that's pretty much everything I know how to do on a guitar. Which is, say, not very much. But, uh...